Hello guys, on today's tutorial we are going to learn how to assemble a radio frequency controlled car using a Regino, where we've created the transmitter as well as the receiver. To get more information, visit our social web at garagelab.com. To buy one of our products, go to garagelabstore.com slash store. And don't forget to subscribe at our YouTube channel. So guys, uh, this is the control used in this tutorial. It was built on a breadboard where we have placed four buttons. Uh, that's gonna give us the direction of a car. We also have a garagino and connected to it a transmitter module that will transmit the commands to the car. And below the our circuit we put a support for three batteries that will provide power to garagino. Um, besides our control, we have our car. Here it is, developed on the robotic platform Magician, which possesses two wheels and a sliding sphere in front of it. Here we are using the dual motor Garagino with a Garagino connected to it. And above the Garagino, we have a mini RF radio frequency receiver shield that. Uh, will be a receiver here on our system. We also have four AA batteries to provide uh, power to the motors. And here below it, below our circuit, we have three AA batteries to provide power to our Garagino here. Remember that uh, Garagino operates with a voltage supply up to 5 volts. In this case, I'm using 4.5 coming from the batteries, the three batteries below it. Thus, I've separated the Garagino power supply from the motor supply in order to avoid any interference that could appear during the process. In order to do that, you have to take off the 5 volts jumper that we find here uh, in the middle of the dual motor garagino shield. By taking it off, you separate the garagino supply from the motor supply. As you may have noticed, it's pretty easy to work with a uh, garagino dual motor shield. Every information needed to the assembly of the tutorial you can find on our social web. It's just look for the tutorial's title, how to assemble a radio frequency controlled car using a Regino. Uh, there we also provide the, the list of the material we have used. We talk a little bit about the operation of both the transmitter as well as the receiver, that is the car, a receiver. Then we explain a little bit about the virtual wire library needed to this tutorial and then we are led to this actual assembly. Here we have uh, the step-by-step -step to assemble both the control with our transmitter and the car with our receiver. And finally we have the SCAT part. Actually we are using two SCATs, one to the transmitter and another one to the receiver. But now let's turn to the fun part of this tutorial. The main reason that we are here, to see the car working properly. Let's go! And here it is. Here is the car. I will turn on the motors firstly. In the end, I will turn on the Garagino. Notice that the uh, power LED has turned on, indicating that the car is ready to be controlled. Now, let's put it on the floor and I'm getting the control now in order to see it working. Here it is the control. I just have to press the buttons in order to move it. Uh, oops, I have to 
turn the control on as well. I have to turn on the Garagino. Notice that the power LED has turned on as you saw in the car. Now, forward, backwards, forward, right, left, forward, backwards. I'm gonna take off my hands of the screen in order to show you better. Forward, backwards, left, right. By pressing the right button, it will spin to the right. And the same behavior is found with the left button, okay? So that's it, that's the today's demonstration. Now, let's turn briefly to the sketch explanation. Let's go. So my friends, uh, this is the sketch used by Garagino connected to our control, our transmitter. I provide a brief explanation about it. Firstly, we include the library called Virtual Wire, that's very important. And then we create a variable named ladder that will receive the character or ladder that represents the command. Then we initialize the transmitter module. In this case, the mini RF transmitter shield uses the pin 3 from Garagino. This is very important to remember. Then we configure the pins 1, 6, 7, 12 as inputs. These are the pins connected to our buttons. Then our loop where our software keeps running. So I check which button was pressed. If the press button was the one linked to the pin 12, I store F into the variable ladder. If it is the linked to the pin 11, I store B. I store R to the pin 6 and L to the pin 7. Thus, it will be one of these conditions if there is a button being pressed. Otherwise, if there is a button being pressed, I'm going to store the character S into my variable ladder. Then, if I'm not pressing a button, the car must stand still. Because I'm sending the character S, that means stop. Now, if you pay attention, each command, that is, each ladder, represents one type of movement. F to forward, B to backwards, R to right, and L to left. Makes sense, doesn't it? After done this, I will send three times the variable ladder. Why three times? Well, if the first command fails, I still have two more chances to my information, my data, to achieve the transmitter. So, this command is meant to send my variable, in this case, uh, the variable called ladder. Then I create a delay of 10 milliseconds. Uh, before initiate the next transmission. Therefore, it stays inside of this form for about 30 milliseconds, right? As you may realize, uh, this cat is pretty simple. Feel free to change uh, the characters I defined here. It's up to you, really. And if you also want to change the control pins, it's just to change them here. Okay. Uh, now, let's turn briefly to the next sketch. The receiver connected to the Garagino, which is connected to our car. Let's go. So, uh, this is the sketch we've used at the Garagino placed at our car where we'll find the RF receiver shield. In the same manner we did with the previous sketch, we include the library virtual wire. Then we include the library bomb motor and create an instance for this library. Uh, we create a variable ladder to store the received data through the receiver and we and then we will initialize the receiver module. Notice that the mini RF receiver shield uses the pin 2 of Garagino. 
and inside of the loop we have our software running here I do the data reading uh, through these functions and if something is received I do the reading and store what was received into the variable ladder if what was received was the character F I move the car forward if it was B backwards if it was R to the right and finally if it was L I move the car to the left if no condition above was chosen I check if the received variable is S if it is I stop the two motors and thus my car this code is completely dependent on what is sent by the transmitter. Uh, this code is also very simple, but remember, if you have changed the characters in the transmitter code, you also have to change them here, with the same characters you defined there, okay? And that's it. That's all for today, my friends. Now you are able to build your own car controlled by RF. Thank you for watching and I really expect to see you again right here on Garage Lab TV. See ya!